Okay, so let's continue. So we left off with these pieces, which uh, for now look fine. Although this is the only one that I'm not really happy about. I don't know. Maybe I can just change my seat after all. Yeah, let, let's set our seat to, what did I set to? Four. Let's set my seat to four and we'll see how it goes. So what we're going to do now is right now, I do not like having this like horizontal. Like when I create um, rocks, I, I like to have like some um, diagonal pieces. So what I'm going to do for these cracks also, because if we look at our reference here, you can kind of see like it's diagonal. Like I know that technically we could just rotate the texture and everything, but I don't like that. I like to give it a little bit more interest. So to do this, there is a node and this node is called the save transform grayscale. Basically, the difference between this node and the transform node is that this one, um, you are not able to break your tiling. So here you can only tile it a, a certain amount of times. But the interesting thing is that in the rotation, we can set this to 45 degrees. And now if we press space, it will still be tiling at 45 degrees. And that's um, the biggest thing that I want to cover. Now, after seeing this, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm a bit worried that... Um, our lines are too contrasty. So that's something that we will have a look at. But um, we'll see. What we are going to do now is I just want to go ahead and break this up a little bit. Because right now they are perfectly straight. I just want to give it some kinks and nicks and everything. Because even over here you can see. Here see all those kinks and nicks and all that stuff. I just want to go ahead and I want to capture that also. So I'm going to add a directional warp. I've used it before. Only this time we are going to use it in a more traditional way, which is we go to noises and we grab a noise to break things up a little bit. So let's grab a crystals noise, which I often use for like sharper details. And you set the scale a bit higher. And basically the crystals will, if we plug this in here, and if we then set our warp angle like downwards, for example, here it creates like these sharper cuts like this. And now you can just play around with your intensity, set it. A little bit lower, maybe to around, I think, 5. Around 5 looks good. There we go. And then you can, of course, also play around with the scales of your crystals just to create some more nicer breakup lines like that. Um, yeah, I'm going to set my scale to probably 8. I think 8 is... I'm often very picky about exactly getting the number I want. So I'm going to set this to 8. And there we go. So now we already have some breakup going on, which is pretty good. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we want to go ahead and we want to just give this a little blur. And the reason I need to do this is because, I'll, well, I'll show you. So, oh, sorry, I did that too quickly. Um, space, and I always use the blur high quality grayscale. So the blur high quality grayscale, it just uh, gives a little higher quality blur. And then I tend to always just set the intensity down and then just play around with my intensity a little bit to just give it like a little bit smoother lines the reason i do this is because once we are going to break up our directional warp if we have this super sharp what you will get is you will get a very sharp line that looks like it's an error however if we blur this a little bit um, everything just kind of like fades into each other so let's say that we have this piece now i'm going to show you how we are going to break this up to get started with so we have a directional warp over here and we want to plug in our rocks or the, or the big shapes in the top and then move this up and then plug in this shape here at the bottom now once you've got this you want to set your warp angle down for example and then just play around with your intensity let's set this to like 50. now what you get is this effect so we get these really harsh cuts so i don't know yet exactly what intensity that i want to go for i just want to go for an intensity that we get these effects that we really get like these um, sharp cuts where all of a sudden it goes from white to like mid gray or dark. The reason I want to do this is because in your height map, this means that over here it will create like a little level. So that it will all of a sudden fall off. And I think that will look very interesting. I don't know if I add a normal map if I can already show you. We might need a bit more for that. Set the 30. Yeah, here you can see it like a little bit. And because we made this blurry here, if I set the blur down, you get this effect, which doesn't look very good. However, when we blur this, we get like a slightly softer effect. 
Now this is still <laughs> doesn't look very good, but that's something that we are going to work on now. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to enhance some of these cracks. Right now we are only shifting our we are or, yeah we are only shifting our texture or our material. Now what we want to do is we want to actually give it some dents and thick cracks in here instead of just shifting it around. So this is mostly for these kinds. Like see see the ones over here. They are very strong, and those are the ones that I would just want to cut out. Um, to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, most likely what I end up with will be a edge detect. And basically an edge detect, you, what it does is it detects edges. <laughs> uh, not too difficult. So if we throw on our direction warp in here. And then if we set our edge roundness all the way down, because the edge roundness always just like, yeah, just makes your corners round. And then just tone down the edge detect. So this is what you get. So it's able to see these edges over here. And it's able to say, oh, okay, so I need to just detect these edges. If, I, if we would do this with the blur, uh, the edges would become a little bit thicker, but I don't think I want to do that. Now that we have this edge detect, um, this is also going to be a mask right away. So we are going to use this in two stages. The first stage is going to be that we are going to use a bevel. And a bevel node, if we type it in, um, if I can type bevel, basically whatever you input it, it will try to give a bevel to it. So these are harsh shapes. They are black and white, which means that they work quite well with the bevel. Um, when you click on it, nothing will show. This is because your distance is way too high. If we would set this to like um, zero here, you can see. So you can create a bevel very quickly. Now we want to go ahead and we want to set this bevel actually in like this. So 0 0.02, which will mean that they become cracks with a fall off. So they fall off from top height down to lower height. And that's basically what I want to capture. Uh, for the rest, you can play around with your smoothing a little bit if you want. Just to make the cracks a little bit smoother. I'm going to set this very low to like 0.1. But uh, for now, this should be fine. Now, with our cracks, um, the only thing I'm going to do now is I'm just going to break it up a little bit. And for that, I'm going to introduce a new note. There is this note, which will probably become one of your fa most favorite notes. And it is called the Slow Blur Grayscale. It's definitely one of my favorites. Basically, what this note allows you to do is it allows you to break up... Um, it allows you to break up any information, basically, that you have in here. Any grayscale information that you have... That is not all pure black or pure white. Uh, it allows to break it up using a using an, uh, grunge or a mask or whatever you want. So what we're going to do is we are going to use a Perlin noise in here. And let's set this a bit bigger. What you can do then is you can plug this into your slope. Now this will completely break it. But if you set your samples all the way up. Your intensity all the way down. And your mode to minimum. Minimum basically means that it only affects darker um, colors. Maximum means it affects lighter colors. And blur means that it affects both. So we're going to set this to minimum. And if you can now here see. I'm just giving my intensity like a little bump. And then you get this effect. So if we go before, after. So you can see that it randomly adds some thickness to this. And that is exactly what we have in our reference. So in our reference, here we have some uh, thinner pieces and then all of a sudden we also get like some thicker pieces. Here, here this one is a like, good example. And that is the breakup that I'm talking about. Same over here that I just want to try and capture. So we got those pieces all done. That is all good. Now what we're going to do is we are just going to blend these cracks together with our base. So here we have our direction wall. Let's go ahead and blend those and just plug this in here. And I most likely want to set this to like subtract. Oh no, wait, not subtract. Um, let's see, I always get confused with this. Uh, I think multiply, multiply might be it here. And then if we just play out with opacity, we get this effect. So we might have too many cracks for now but we will just play around with that once again it's all about playing around with it so here we have our multiply now let's for now just set this to around 0.4 something like that um, it's all about creating the basis and after we've done that what we will do is we will just go ahead and balance it all out to make it look perfect 
Now the next one that we're going to work on is actually going to be a really fun one. And that is over here. You can see that every single line here has bulges in it. Meaning that, if, let's say that this is one piece. You can see that it kind of like bulges up. Same over here. This is one piece. It bulges up and this is one piece. So everything just has like this little gradient that goes that uh, gives it like a little uh, inflated look. Let me say it like that. Yeah, that's a good word. Inflated look. And that's actually really easy to achieve. Uh, and I really like the technique because I use it a lot. So basically what you want to do for this is there is a note. The very, the really the older, and I'm talking about like the substances from one or two years ago, do not have this. But um, if you've had a if you have had a substance license after like I don't know 2018, you should have this note. Um, it's called the flat fill note. So the flat fill note, basically, what it allows you to do is it allows you to input something. In this in this case, we are going to input our edge detect, and it will use that to um, generate position data. Like you can see over here. Now what you can do with that is you have a lot of notes. So here if you type in flat or FLO, you can see it does everything from that you can turn this position data to different colors, to different gradients, grayscales, other positions, um, randomized grayscales, a lot of stuff. The one that we want to use is uh, flat filter gradient. The cool thing about flat filter gradient is that it allows you to just go ahead and like set the angle variation. And this will just give you different angles. Now, some it doesn't always work. So over here, you can see that this one, for some reason, it doesn't capture it as well. But that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, basically, the reason that I want to get this is because I want to use this grayscale to randomize um, some col to randomize some angles to also have these. Where where's my reference? Um, to basically have these bulges uh, flow off. You can see here that sometimes you can see that the bulges are lower at one side and then they like go up. They are not always perfectly in the center. So with this done, there is one more note that we need. And this is the note that will actually turn this into bulges. The note is called a non-uniform grayscale. Non-uniform blur grayscale. Now what this note does is it basically allows you to um, blur something using a blur map. However, if you plug in the exact same thing in both of these, what effect it often gives you is it gives you the effect that something is, um, that it, it will just blur within its shape and it will just turn it into a gradient. Now we want to set our samples all the way up and then you can really see the effect. And then here, if you go to intensity here, you, you can see the, I hope that you can understand what I mean with this effect. So it will give you like this bulging gradient which if I throw on a normal, just as an example, here you see, it almost looks like pillows. And by the way, this is also the technique you would use if you like create sci-fi pillows or something like that. So all these techniques come in handy that I'm teaching you also for many other different types of materials. So once you've done this, you can see also this harsh cut over here, this kind of like gone by this point. It might still be there like a little bit, but just set your intensity quite high. Let's set it to like, 30 and then if you add another blend to this and you plug in this shape the blending mode that you want to use is you want to use a switch blend and if you tone this down what you will get is you will get just these bulges on top of here without losing much of all the other details now, i believe that the multiply can also work but the multiply is often slightly darker so that's why i tend to just use switch to uh, preserve these kind of areas over here. So we just want to set it a little bit higher to let's say around uh, let's set this don't go too high like because this will also increase the intensity of our cracks so I'm going to set this to around 0 0.15 and then I'm going to go in my cracks and just tone those down a bit and this is just because there is darkness in here which means that these cracks will all just be reinforced so having this tone down a cracks a bit more and what we can do now is we can just throw on normal just to see how it looks you have set this to 20 again okay so we have some cracks uh, we definitely need to break these up especially in like these areas but it is already like a good start to get started with so in the next chapter what we will do 
is we will go ahead and we will break all of these pieces up a little bit more to make them a bit more realistic. And especially once we like add our own cracks, everything just all comes together. So let's right click and add a frame to this. And we will call these um, large cuts. I know I sometimes switch be between cracks and cuts. The reason I do this is um, because else you will get confused that I'm when I'm calling these cracks. So I like to just call these cuts because they look like cuts. So let's save our scene and let's continue with that in the next chapter.